This is Daniel Poppy, host of How to Write Good. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. This is Rachel Mullins, host of Hashtag No Filter Friday here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my new show, Hashtag No Filter Friday, where we talk about all of the sexual misconduct allegations swirling around Hollywood. A new show drops every Friday at 830 Pacific Standard Time. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you'll never miss an episode of Hashtag No Filter Friday. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. morning. Do you ever wonder what it's like to build resiliency? Do you ever wonder what it's like to be able to pursue and move on? Well, good morning. My name is Kim Meyer and I am here with you on Public House Media. Today we're going to talk about self-love and mastering our experiences. We are going to talk about how to elevate your life and be better because you're here and because you know how to get the most out of the time, the precious time that we have here on this earth before we head to heaven with God. All right. Good morning. I'm so glad that you're here and I'm so blessed and honored to be sponsored by public or the Good House, um, Good God Company. <laughs> I can't talk this morning. Um, the Good God Company right here on Public House Media. The Good God Company is all about putting on our full armor of God within our own empowering, motivational, spiritual, and inspirational accessories. Um, and so if you are interested in finding some good swag to wear um, that has something to do with your faith and you want to just love others and and sh- be a billboard for God, um, that's a great place to go. You get some great coffee mugs, some great swag, some great shirts, some great everything, and um, it's it's just fun. Um, I've got some on my way, and I'm looking forward to um, sharing and feeling good um, in my God my God swag. All right, Good God Company is an amazing place. All right, let's get rolling. Five tips to build your resilience. These are not going to be new earth shattering concepts. They're going to be things I've talked about all the time, but we're going to talk about them a little bit different way. Um, if you want to build resilience, if you want to build a thicker skin of, of positivity that you can help um, shed off the negative stuff, that you can help deflect the things that are going to go wrong in your life, let's talk about how you can, can do that, all right? Number one, experience more positive emotions. And you'll be thinking, duh, I need to be more positive. Yes, I know. But we also know from neuroscience that experience rewires the brain. So why wouldn't you do more of the things that you want to have happen? Uh, I think about like a sand like beach, you know, if like kids are building a moat, like I think about well, back in the day, like when we were playing on the farm and if we wanted water to go a certain direction, you had to, you had to build the, the creek to go that way. So we would like put up rocks and things and then we get in trouble for blocking the waterway. But anywho, um, we would, we have to like move the water in a certain direction to go that way. So it's just like that, the same thing happens in your brain. The ne- from the neuroscience that's been happening, the research that's been happening says the experiences we have in our life rewires our brain to think differently. So emotions like joy and interest and delight, they all help us function better and they rewire our brain for the increased resilience against the hard stuff. When we can wire our brain to be in a positive way and move in a good direction with gratitude and heart and and love and passion, those are the things that are going to help us get to the things that we want to get to. We're going to be able to fill the bucket. We're going to be able to drive the water where we want it to go. So start to notice the positive events in your life. Seek out new experiences that give you joy. This will help your experience and positive emotions, like counterproductive, like the negative bias. When you have a positive emotion, it's like nine to one to the negative. So do good things. Seek out the positive things. Find the joy in your day. And it will help you move on and, and build resilience going forward in your future. The second thing is having an attitude of gratitude. And I have a gratitude exercise for you this morning that it's going to help you get there. So the first thing I want you to do is set a timer. Get out a little kitchen timer or find a timer on your phone. And I want you to, for two minutes, I want you to write down everything that you're grateful for. Two minutes. Like, just keep writing as much as you can write in two minutes. And if you're not writing much down in two minutes, you should go find a friend that can help you do with this activity because everyone has something to be grateful for. That's really where you got to change your mindset. Write down for two minutes everything that you're grateful for. And then while you're doing that, allow your body to just open up and feel that gratitude. 
feel the joy that comes with having those grateful moments. And if possible, do this like once or twice a day for 30 days. Be consistent in it and see how how much joy and how what that does to your body. This will help you see the positive even when things are going wrong and it's going to help it's you know it's purposefully being intentional in training your brain to be the positive. And so that's, you know, neuroscience, it's science, it's there, right? Number three, hand on heart serenity exercise. This one, um, when my good friend Julianne talks about this a lot, place your hand on your heart right here. Do it with me. Okay. Are you have your hand there? Now, just sit quiet. What do you feel? Your heart's beating, right? You can see it in there. You know that it's there. Hand on your heart not only calms your stress, your neurons around your heart, um, it, it helps just center you. And it makes you feel more grateful because no matter what's going on around you, your heart is beating, your breath is coming into your lungs, and you are alive. Isn't that amazing? Hand on your heart calms your ner- stress, your, calms your neurons around your heart. Massage, massaging the area or just like your shoulders or the back of your neck, um, those kinds of things are lead to brain release of oxycotton, oxytoc. I can't say the word, um, which is a natural antidote for stress. And so when you can find joy, that that drug is released in your brain, the oxytocin, I don't know, <laughs> I'm totally butchering that, I'm sorry. Uh, oxytocin, that's how you say it. Um, and it's that's the good chemical inside of you. It happens when you exercise, it happens when you experience joy, it's that little bit of high that you get when people co- um, come comment to you about how great you're doing a compliment. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, and so it's just, it's just a great thing. And so when you get your body moving in a direction where you're getting anxious, like I'm right now stumbling over all my words, um, you can just move yourself to a heart of gratitude, put your hand on your chest, feel the heartbeat, know that you are good and you are gracious and you are wonderful. And God put that heart in you for a reason to do good things. The fourth thing that you can do is an an emotion exercise, all right? So get ready for this one too. Assume a posture that has emotion that is difficult, like for anger, okay? Notice the feelings that arise for you if you hold that for 30 seconds. So if you stand tall and you put a grimace on your face, like hold that for like 30 seconds and feel the tension that comes with that, okay? Now once you've done that, flip it. Do the opposite posture for 30 seconds. Then return to the original emotion for 15 seconds and then flip it back around again. So you're going to feel the emotions. What does it feel like for your body to be there? To know what your body feels like when it's in an angry state. To know what your body feels like when you're in a joyful state. And to feel the contrasting differences between the two really helps you acknowledge and identify when those things are happening to your body in the regular day to day. So this is a way of letting your body lead us via movement and an emotion that we have struggled with. And in doing so, we build up our resilience. We can notice it faster when we know what it feels like. You know, it's one of those things where like, um, there's a a young man that's missing in our area right now. Um, uh, and he's, he's an autistic boy that is, is missing and we've all been praying for him. Um, so much looking, trying to find him. There's been search parties every day this week. Um, really trying to find, you know, have a good outcome for this. And, um, at first when the, the a post was shared on social media, we're looking for so-and-so, um, we can't, you know, if, if I, this is what he looks like. I was like, I need a picture. I need to see what he looks like. So I know what's happening. Like anybody could have a brown coat and be five, seven, like I need a picture. And then pretty soon there was a picture that was shared and I was like, okay, now I can search for this same kind of thing with your body, with your emotion. You have to know exactly what it looks like, feels like is so you can identify it and know how to avoid it or how to get rid of it um, in this sense or how to find it um, if you're looking for something specific. So understanding what it feels like to be in an angry state, understanding what it feels like to be in a positive state, and then flip-flopping between the two so you can recognize them throughout your day and handle them appropriately when they happen. And the fifth thing that I want to help you, help you kind of build some resiliency in your life is to do one scary thing per day. Now, this is Eleanor Roosevelt's advice, not necessarily for me. However, I do agree with her. So when you, whenever you do something new, your brain maybe sees it as a mistake, right? Your brain is designed to keep you safe, to keep you healthy, to keep you 
in a certain spot, right? Like comfort, right? It doesn't want you to be cause any pain. It doesn't want you to have any discomfort. It wants you just to live your little happy life right here in this bubble. But in order for you to go from here to there, you got to get out of the comfort zone, right? <laughs> it's kind of like you have to, if you want to get out of the pool and get back to your hotel room, like, or if you want to even go get in the pool, sometimes like you have to go across the way to get in there. Um, and so you have to think about the disrupting the, the dopamine that keeps you in your little spot. You have to move past it. We're going to feel anxious when we do new things. We're going to feel anxiety. We're going to feel um, a little uneasiness, but moving past that and getting going through that, building that resiliency, getting moving through something that's going to scare you is how you're going to actually experience success in the, in the end. So you're never going to feel more fulfilled. You're never going to feel more successful. You're never going to feel more um, filled up than when you move past the things that are holding you back and actually getting to the goal that you want. When we do one scary thing a day, we are teaching ourselves that we can do new things that we've, that we've never done before. It, it, we can. It's showing our brain, retraining our brain that new things aren't necessarily scary. They're just different. And if we want something different, we have to do something different. And so today I hope I hope I've challenged you. I hope I've pushed you a little bit in your thinking to move past the comfort zone, move past the things that are holding you back in life, build some resiliency so that you know that you can go forward in your in your day, in your week, in your month, in your lifetime and do amazing things. Do the things God gave you the the powers and the the skills and the mindset to do. We've just been too scared to do them. Let's have a little more faith in the man, right? He has given us everything that we need. We just need to open our eyes and our ears and look for them, right? He's put amazing skills and abilities inside of you, a purpose for you, each and every one of us. And if we can build up our resiliency and put a little more faith in him, we'll be able to do those scary things every day. We'll be able to identify the emotions that are, are part of our lives and handle them in a more appropriate way. We can put our hand, if we're getting freaked out, we can put our hand on our heart and just be grateful for that we have a heartbeat and the breath in our lungs and we're able to do the great things. Having gratitude, having an attitude of gratitude every day and rewiring our brain with positive joy and uplifting content. Why not you, right? Thank you so much for joining me this morning. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you got something out of it, that you put one of these tips into practice in your life and build more resiliency in your world so that you become more grateful, more um, awe-inspiring, more joyous in your day, and just rewire your brain to be positive thing. Thank you so much for joining me. And if you have not yet liked Public House Media, liked my page, Choose to Rise, or subscribe to my podcast. I hope that you do. And if you would do me a favor and tell at least three friends about Choose to Rise, let them know that you are enjoying this, that it's a great uplifting content and that they should join too. And then tell their friends about it as well. I have a really big goal this year of doubling my listenership and I would love for your help in that. And if you find value here, give it up to other people. Let's spread the word of positivity because my goal in this world is to help women rise up out of their past and live their best lives with hope and purpose. And I can't do that without your help. And I can't do that without you, you know, paying it forward to helping other people. Also go check out good, the good God company, wear your faith proud uh, on a shirt, on a cup and a bag, wherever live your life in a good, positive way, be inspirational, motivational in a God friendly way. Thank you, Good God Company, for sponsoring us today. And if you are a super busy mom that just needs a little bit of help figuring out the game plan of life, like you just need some help um, with some goals or just centering your mind on what is it that I really want to achieve in life, I've got a, a busy mom's goal plan, um, game plan sheet that I'd love to give you. Just shoot me an email at choose to rise up at gmail.com and I would love to send that off to you. Um, it's a great way to just get focused. And it doesn't necessarily have to be health and living, um, which is one of the, the groups that I always put up forward with. It's just about uplifting things like this and um, helping you kind of refocus and head forward the direction that you want to go. So if it's a free, res free resource for you, I'd love to drop it to you in an email. So just email me at choose to rise up at gmail.com and I will be happy to send that off to you. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Uh, and if you thank you so much for joining again, and I hope to see you back here again on Friday on Public House Media and every day on Choose to Rise. Talk to you later. Bye.